Today, I'm going to compare and contrast two popular routes for getting citizenship by investment. The five Caribbean programs, which generally involve making a donation to get citizenship in a matter of months, and Turkey's citizenship by investment program, which is generally characterized by investments in real estate or depositing money in the bank. What I always tell people is when you're looking at citizenship by investment, make sure you exhaust all the other options first. Dual citizenship can start with getting a passport through your descent, through marriage. If you want to move somewhere, you could get it that way. Citizenship by investment is a great addition to a passport portfolio, but you don't want to rely on only the six options we're going to talk about today. What we help our clients do is sift through dozens and dozens and dozens of options. We oftentimes do end up that investment is fastest, easiest, whatever it may be, but always make sure you're evaluating all your options and not just going somewhere where they have six different passports. That being said, we do have six criteria, which I'm going to evaluate these six passports against. Travel privileges, taxes, image, lifestyle and language, proximity and protection. I'm going to compare and contrast the Caribbean with Turkey's programs. And if it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors to put the pieces of their offshore puzzle together, from getting a second passport, to where to live with a second residence, to how to manage their taxes, reduce what they pay, and diversify and protect their assets. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. You can learn more about the biggest and best offshore event called Nomad Capitalist Live, which we host every year uh, as well. So uh, let's start with travel privileges. So let's identify the playing field for those of you who don't know. In the Eastern Caribbean, you have five countries that will issue you citizenship within a matter of months from when you submit your documents. You have St. Lucia, I hold that passport. You have Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, and Dominica, not to be confused with the Dominican Republic. Some of these countries do have non-donation options. St. Lucia has a bond investment option. You get 0% for a number of years. They give you your money back, but you still pay a lesser processing fee. Some of the countries have real estate options. Generally speaking, they are what's called approved real estate, generally not very good deals. And again, you're still going to pay some processing fees. So you're not escaping the entire sunk cost. Um, occasionally, you'll find like a business investment program. Again, it's rather restrictive. So the general approach for like 99% of people is make the donation in these countries. Yeah, the money's gone forever, but it's better than like chasing down some share of a hotel room seven years from now. Turkey, on the other hand, allows you to invest in property. It allows you to put money in the bank. They recently changed that to require you to do that in Lira. They also have a provision now that allows uh, residents of the country to uh, basically recap any uh, losses they have in Turkish Lira versus the foreign currency uh, if the Lira drops more than the interest rate. So interest rates are sky high in Turkey. And so you can earn very high interest rates. If you lose more than the interest rate in foreign currency terms, you can actually uh, get that back. So theoretically, your risk is limited in that, but it's still uncomfortable for a lot of folks. Or you can also hire 50 Turkish citizen employees if you are expanding a company. It's obviously a lot more difficult. So you're looking at, at the low end, $400,000 for real estate in Turkey. You're going to add a little bit to that just because you want to you know, be on the safe side for a couple of different provisions. Uh, in the Caribbean, you're looking at, depending on your family size, 100,000, 130,000, 150,000, something like that, and up, depending on how many people. You can often add in the Caribbean, um, you know, all your kids, even some adult kids. You can add, you know, parents, dependent parents. In one case, parents who aren't dependent, right? And so the Caribbean is going to be more flexible in terms of how many folks you can, you can have. I think we had, you know, one family where there was like eight or nine different people on there. And so you can really um, get it for the whole family. Turkey is a bit more restrictive, but obviously it's a nature, it's a, it's a, it's a question of, do I want to make a donation plus fees, or do I want to make a, an investment plus a little bit lower fees? The, the costs in Turkey are lower. What do I get in terms of travel? That's the first metric I want to study. So St. Kitts and Nevis is slightly the strongest passport in the area. They're all pretty much similar. Four to five of them has visa free access to Russia, all but St. Lucia. Two of them have visa free access to China. You get a few other countries if you're a Westerner, like Venezuela, for example, if you really wanted to go to Venezuela. Um, they can go to Europe, they can go to the UK. Um, so these are not you know, US or Western European quality travel documents. These are um, pretty good passports, though, what I would call a tier B plus. They can go to Europe, they can go to uh, the UK, they can go to most of Southeast Asia. The average Westerner, if they were to lose or give up their Western passport, would need to get a, a visa for you know, as many as something like 12 countries that you might want to go to. So a place like Mexico, for example, you could get a residence permit or you could apply for a visa. Japan, uh, places like that, Morocco, South Africa, right? Some of these countries you might not want to go to, the visas wouldn't be that hard. Obviously, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand are going to be the hardest countries to get a visa for. Uh, Turkey has 
also some of the same challenges. Turkish citizens cannot go to the US, Canada, Australia, or New Zealand without first applying for a visa. They also need a visa for the UK and Ireland, and they also need a visa for Europe's borderless Schengen area. Where the Turkish passport is stronger is uh, potentially a little bit stronger in South America and Central America and the Caribbean. Uh, if you get one of the slightly more expensive passports in the Caribbean side, you'll get pretty much all of that. You might miss Paraguay, for example. Um, so in my case, St. Lucia, I have some holes in South America that are covered by another passport I have. Um, but, you know, Turkey fills it in a bit more strongly. And so, for example, if you want to become a permanent resident of Paraguay, the Turkish passport's a little bit stronger. Minor issue for most people. Turkish passport's a little bit stronger in Southeast Asia. So I've talked to folks who go to Thailand as tourists, and they've used their Turkish passports. And you can't do that with a Caribbean passport now. You can get a, uh, a Thai tourist visa pretty easily. Um, but the Turkish passport is going to be stronger in all the other countries. Turkey has what we call a T or C passport. No U.S. and no Europe. However, because Turkey is a huge country, they do have uh, in a lot of countries that want them to come. So a lot of the smaller countries outside of the Western world that aren't really bothered to do, uh, do visa-free deals with other countries will open up. So you know, Central Asia, for example. Um, again, some of the smaller countries in Latin America. Those countries don't really bother. I mean, Eastern Europe, for example, so the Balkans, um, a lot of the countries in that region, uh, you know, you're not going to have access to all those countries with a Caribbean passport. St. Kitts comes the closest. Um, St. Kitts will get you in uh, to all those Eastern European countries, but they won't all. And so if you are out of the West, then Turkey may be a little bit stronger. If you put the two together, you've got a pretty strong combination in terms of travel. And you're basically just left with what we call the, the Kuna countries, Canada, uh, US, New Zealand, and Australia. And you can throw in the UAE for good measure, which you could get a residence permit by starting a business. Um, Mexico, you could get a residence permit or uh, go on Turkey's uh, e-visa regime for Mexico. So travel privileges, uh, that's the deal. Taxes. People talk about taxes. Oh, Turkey has higher taxes. I'm going to go to Antigua. I'm going to go to St. Kitts. They don't have taxes. Now, if you want to live in your citizenship country, if you're saying, hey, I love the Caribbean. We have a lot of entrepreneurs we work with. Time zones are important to them. They don't want to be seven hours ahead of their staff back in North America. And so some of them say, hey, I'd like to live in the Caribbean. Now, you can decide whether you want the little bit more rustic and affordable Caribbean that these programs in the Caribbean, that's what they have, they're not as developed, or whether you want to get a second passport and then go and get a residence permit in Cayman Islands or Bahamas or Turks and Caicos where things are a little bit more developed, a little bit flashier. That's up to you. But if you like the idea of getting a Caribbean passport to live somewhere else tax-free, you can do that. Now, if you're an American, if you're a U.S. taxpayer, you're still going to be subject to the U.S. tax rules, and you can dramatically reduce your taxes. And living in a tax-free country as an American makes things easy. That all you've got to do is figure out the U.S. side. You don't have two countries fighting with each other. And so if you become a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis and then go and live in St. Kitts and Nevis, you can reduce your taxes in St. Kitts and Nevis because they're not going to tax you anyway. But if you're an American, uh, you're still going to have to deal with some kind of tax in the U.S., which is easier if you're an entrepreneur. If it's capital gains, that's going to be harder. You can certainly expatriate from the United States and solve that problem. And so if you just want to live in St. Kitts and Nevis, hey, you know, maybe you don't need to go to the U.S. If you're any other citizen, then sure, you check out of your country's tax system and you move to St. Kitts and Nevis. And so that can help you reduce your taxes by opening up new countries. The Caribbean passports, you can live in some of the other countries. You can basically spend... Um, you know, as much time as you like. So if you're a citizen of one of the Caribbean countries, you can live in just a hand, just like half a dozen of them. You can live in the others. Uh, and so you can potentially get a cheaper one and then live in um, one of the tax-free ones. You can get one that's not tax-free and then go and spend your time on one of the ones that's, that uh, is tax-free. However, if you're just going to live in a random place, for example, I spend my time in Malaysia. I spend some of my time in Colombia. Uh, I spend time in various countries in Eastern Europe. I'm not living in St. Lucia, right? And so St. Lucia does not have citizenship-based taxation. Neither does Turkey. Neither does pretty much any country in the world. It's the United States, which taxes you full boat. And again, you have exemptions, exclusions. You can defer all the legal strategies you can use. Eritrea in Africa, which has a diaspora tax. I don't think anyone's paying. And then you have a handful of countries that if you leave, you've got to keep paying for a certain number of years. There are certain conditions. But by and large, most countries don't tax you by being a citizen. And really, the countries where uh, you're leaving, like a Mexico or a Norway, uh, that's, they're taxing you because you've been a tax resident, not because you're a citizen. So if you went to live in Norway for a decade and then you wanted to leave, whether you're a Norwegian citizen or not, they're going to say, hey, for a couple of years, go where we want you to go, please. Uh, I don't do a lot of Norwegian stuff, but that is my understanding. Uh, and so 
really any citizenship you get, if you've never lived in the country, that's not gonna be a problem. By the way, even if you look at a citizenship by descent, people who get Italian citizenship through their, through their family tree, uh, you can still take advantage of Italy's tax incentives as long as you haven't been living and paying taxes in Italy in recent years. And so the country where you're a citizen only really matters in terms of taxes if you're getting it by investment unless, unless you're going to go and live in that country. So, hey, if you get Turkish citizenship, you can live in Turkey and you can live in the part of Cyprus that they claim. Okay, And so those are not tax havens. Okay? And so uh, if you want a tax haven citizenship, then Turkey is not your place. But again, as a Turk, you could go and get a residence permit in the UAE by starting a company in one of the free zones. Um, you could get a residence permit in the Cayman Islands. You could go to a lot of places that are tax-free uh, or tax-advantaged. And so the passport isn't really what matters. The next thing is the image. And so the question is, do you want a big country or a small country? Some people like the, uh, the idea that Turkey has lots of different embassies all around the world, right? You have services you can access. Um, so Caribbean citizens, Commonwealth citizens, have access in certain circumstances to, uh, to the British Embassy. So that certainly can help in an emergency. But yeah, Turkey has more services and Turkey has more heft around the world, right? And so um, some people like that, right? What I think is if you're coming from a big country like the US or the UK or Australia or Canada, people know that. I'd rather have a country that people don't know. Now again, maybe you get both, but I'd like to have something in my portfolio that's, that's very complementary. Now, if I'm from Liechtenstein, sure, maybe I'm more open to being from a country where there are more services. Now, obviously, some of those European countries can use other EU embassies, not that Liechtenstein counts, but, um, you know, so the image is one to consider. What image do you want to carry? Obviously, Turkey is a larger country. You know, it has its share of disagreements with people. I don't know that anyone's really thinking what, you know, St. Lucia's disagreements are with anybody. Uh, to the extent that they do have any, uh, nobody really cares. Right? And so the image could play a role. It's up to you to decide whether you want that big or small image. Uh, lifestyle and language, the Caribbean countries speak English. That can come in handy if you wanted to get a residence permit in a handful of countries like the UK that may require you in some cases to pass an English test. Uh, if you, for example, renounce US citizenship and you are, a, let's say you're just a Turkish citizen, have had some folks come to me, they did that. Uh, and you wanted to move to a country that requires an English language test, the fact that you lived for 40 years in the United States will not sway them. You gotta take the test with everybody else and you gotta pass. It may not be the end of the world, but if you are a citizen of a Caribbean country, one of those five, then those are majority English speaking countries and you don't, you don't need to speak the test, which is kind of interesting that you look at historically how many folks from China uh, who don't speak English went and got citizenship in some of those Caribbean countries and then they don't need to take the test, uh, at least to get in. So the language uh, is certainly one thing, and those countries do speak English in case you wanted to live there. What I tell people is, you will get by, but understand that just as in Singapore, they speak their own slightly different version of English, just as in any country, they speak their own slightly different version of English. I mean, it would require an adaptation. So English is not English is not English is not English, at least not exactly. Uh, on a lifestyle perspective, again, do you want a bigger country? Turkey has plenty of room to roam. I would imagine, like most of us, I'm, being, I'm from the United States, yeah, most places in the United States would not interest me to live, right? Um, Canada, I mean, wherever you're from, you probably are not interested in living from somewhere except for where you're from. Or, you know, maybe you want to live in New York, or maybe you want to live in the beach in California or whatever. Um, but certainly Turkey has more room to roam, if you like that. Turkey has a domestic manufacturing economy. Turkey is doing stuff. Turkey is exporting. Turkey is growing. Um, and so obviously Turkey has some of the economic stuff, but Turkey, uh, you know, has a built-in economy. It's a real economy. Um, they have beaches, they have beautiful beaches. A lot of folks who can't go to Western countries, go, and even, even some who do, but a lot of, you know, historically Russians and, and until Ukrainians got visa-free travel and to Europe, you know, they would go to, uh, to the south of Turkey. Uh, Istanbul, it's a mega city, it's a great city, it's bustling with life. It's not for everybody, but it's a city. It's if you wanna live in a city and you want that guarantee as a citizen, that could be worthwhile. Obviously the Caribbean, I mean, some of these islands, their cities are named fig tree. Their cities are, are you know, named after hills, right? And that's cute, and I think it's great. Um, which one do you want in your portfolio? Proximity is an issue. Um, I think for a lot of North Americans, the idea of I can either get a boat from some places in the US to go to my country. Um, I, I never encourage people who are like, I'm just gonna slip out the back, don't do that. But, you know, if you just wanted to legally get on a boat, these countries are further than the Bahamas. I mean, they're in the Eastern Caribbean. They are closer to South America. So you would need a little bit bigger boat. But theoretically, you could do that. 
Um, you've got a lot of flights from the U.S. and Canada to these countries. In fact, some of the only flights in the world go through there. If you're coming from pretty much anywhere else in the world, uh, the easiest way to get to some of the Caribbean citizenship countries is through London. Um, and there's been times like, I, you know, you think, hey, I'm going to Nomad Capitalist Live in Mexico. Ah, right, hey, Mexico, it's not that far. It's further than you think, number one. And there's no flights from Mexico. So if you don't, let's say you're not a U.S. citizen and you don't have a U.S. or Canadian visa, you're going to like potentially go from Mexico back to London, back to the country. And so it's not as close unless you're coming from the U.S., Canada or the U.K. or occasionally Germany or one of the other islands, as you might think. Um, but proximity, time zones, again, if you wanted to live there, could be valuable. Obviously, Turkey with Istanbul is connected to pretty much everyone in the world. Uh, what I love about Turkish Airlines, uh, that's my airline, because all these six homes that I maintain are connected uh, to Istanbul. So I'm one stop from anywhere in the world between homes. And so if you buy a property in Istanbul, uh, you've got a place. I'll give you an example. I'm going to be in Bogota uh, later this year after our conference. After that, I'm going back to uh, for a, a, a birthday party in Kuala Lumpur. That's a long flight, but it's one stop through Istanbul on Turkish Airways, and I can uh, basically do one of their their you know longer layovers where I can spend three or four days. And I happen to have a property in Istanbul, and so I can spend three days there, and you know cut the journey up. And if depending on where you're living, it may be a great place to stock up on supplies. Um, they've got endless shopping there and it's relatively affordable and so that could be a good thing to have in terms of proximity it may be in some cases that even though istanbul and turkey seems further it's actually a lot easier to get to and you can go from anywhere and i think that one of the things that i've talked about is that um, if some if some new black swan event happens and you need to get back to your country you could be anywhere on earth and it's probably one stop to uh, to turkey and to your country that's something worth considering uh, to proximity. Obviously, we have more folks who are from Europe who understand you know, that Turkey, they don't have as many concerns about Turkey, that are more open. And so if you live closer to it, you may be more open to it. Whereas we have a lot of North Americans, they like the idea of the Caribbean. And lastly is uh, the protection. You know, what are the embassies going to do for you? What services are available? I think people slightly underestimate what the Caribbean countries can offer you. Obviously, Turkey is bigger. But I think the main thing to do is consider how a passport is going to complement what you already have. Remember, you're not necessarily moving to this country. You're getting a passport to travel on. You're getting a passport to perhaps expand your investment horizons. Uh, you're getting a passport to perhaps set yourself up for future tax benefits, uh, to give yourself a place to live, to have a backup plan. Consider your reasons for having a second passport. That's one thing we do with our clients is we walk them through all the different goals and we often correct things where, wait a second, well, that's not gonna solve that. Or if you need that, just, then just do this. And so if you wanna learn more about how we can help you get a second passport and walk through not just six options, but all the options out there, you can go to nomadcapitalist.com.